Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure to meet you virtually at GTR Asia 2021. The past two years have been very difficult for everyone. With COVID-19 posing unprecedented challenges to global trade and supply chains. However, with joint efforts, global trade has been able to and will continue to adapt to the new environment. Today, we see global trade booming, with merchandise trade growing at double-digit rates and surpassing pre-pandemic levels for many countries. In particular, Asia is leading the global recovery for merchandise trade, with export volumes for the first quarter of 2021 at 15% higher than that for 2019. The WTO expects this trend for Asia to continue and for its merchandise export to be 19% higher by the end of 2022 compared to 2019. However, we cannot afford to be complacent. The Delta variant and ongoing challenges faced by global supply chains can dampen the recovery and growth we have experienced. Continued collaboration among trading partners is therefore essential for a healthy and sustained recovery post-pandemic. Asia has set a good example. Amid COVID-19, we have concluded the negotiation of the world's largest free trade agreement. This is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or ASEP for short. It involves economies that accounts for 30% of global GDP and about a third of the world's population. RCEP and other trade agreements can provide the boost for trade flows within the region to flourish. On the bilateral front, Singapore is also strengthening our trade connectivity, including with frontier markets such as Africa. These markets present growing opportunities for our enterprises and traders. For example, in 2020, Singapore launched a digital platform called Business Sun's Borders. This platform helps to connect businesses, traders, and digital services seamlessly. Ghana is one of its pilot countries. On top of collaboration with global partners, it is important to continue leveraging on digitalization to speed up recovery and drive growth. Asia is pursuing the growth of the digital economy by promoting digital integration across trading partners. For example, ASEAN recently adopted the ASEAN Digital Master Plan 2025. It reinforces ASEAN's commitment to create an economic region powered by secure and transformative digital capabilities. This initiative has the potential to create an additional GDP boost of US $1 trillion in the region over the next 10 years. Singapore is also deepening our digital connectivity with our trading partners, such as China. Under the Singapore-China Smart City Initiative in Shenzhen, Singapore has successfully concluded a pilot on digitalizing cross-border trade flows using Trade Trust. Trade Trust comprises a set of globally accepted standards and frameworks that support the exchange of electronic trade documents. It is achieved through a public blockchain offering interoperability across different trade platforms and formats. Recently, industry-led technical trials on trade financing using simulated electronic bills of lading were successfully executed between China and Singapore. The processing time was reduced from days to an hour. At the industry level, Singapore is building infrastructure to enhance connectivity across supply chains. For example, in July this year, Singapore launched the Singapore Trade Data Exchange, or SG Trade Dex, in short. It enables seamless data connection across the supply chain, both locally and globally. When fully developed, SG Trade Dex will have the potential to unlock more than Singapore $200 million of value annually. Besides digitalization, 
sustainability is another key driving force behind growth and transformation. Governments and industry are playing a larger role in driving and adopting more sustainable and green solutions. In particular, financing is a key enabler. We are delighted to see that the financial industry has been proactive on this front. For example, HSBC and Tamase recently launched a partnership to establish a debt financing platform dedicated to sustainable infrastructure projects with an initial focus on Southeast Asia. Both partners will invest up to a combined US $150 million to fund the loans. Asia Development Bank and Clifford Capital will be their strategic partners. It hopes to build a pipeline of up to US $1 billion of loans within five years. Another example is the Climate Impact X project launched in May this year by DBS, Standard Chartered, Tamase, and SGX. It is a global marketplace for trading high quality carbon credits. It utilizes satellite monitoring, machine learning, and blockchain technology to enhance the integrity of carbon credits traded. This ensures that projects supported will deliver tangible and lasting environmental impact. Green financing is needed for smaller enterprises which are developing new green solutions. On 1st of October, Enterprise Singapore introduced a new financing scheme named the Enterprise Financing Scheme Green or EFS Green in short. This is a partnership with financial institutions to catalyze green loans to enterprises developing innovative green technologies to reduce waste and emissions. This will expedite green transformation across industries, including the global trade supply chain. We are glad that the first EFS green loan was awarded by HSBC within one month of its launch. This was a Singapore $6 million trade loan to Europower Group. This will enable Europower to accelerate the development and distribution of its next generation lithium ion batteries. They will be used for Singapore's Tuas Megaport's automated guided vehicle fleet. The Tuas port will become the world's largest fully automated port. We are also delighted to see enterprises see new opportunities to create a niche for themselves. For example, CO2X, a joint venture among three Singapore companies partnered with financiers to provide a solution to track carbon footprints, starting with the logistics sector. This in turn helps enterprises to secure green and sustainable financing via the same platform. The post-pandemic environment presents both challenges and opportunities. All parts of the global trade ecosystem must work together to transform and digitalize. Together, we can build a stronger foundation for a more resilient global trade ecosystem and ensure strong growth for the future. Thank you very much.